lot of people these days have the most insane Tmux configurations that display the time and the weather and all of their events and all these things, and they have like 600 plugins to do that. Honestly, like when I want to know that stuff, I look outside. I look at the sun. That's why my Tmux configuration is so minimal and ugly looking, but when it does one thing and it does that thing well, I don't need it to do other stuff. I can do all the normal Tmux stuff. I can jump around directories to different projects. If you've seen Sessionizer before, it's just like that. I can switch back and forth between them. I can switch between tabs. I can create splits. I can kill the splits. I can kill the windows. I can move the windows. Let's move that to four. I can rename them. Um, DDoS. I can do all the normal Tmux stuff, you know? And then I've got hotkeys for, that's so for projects, that's for notes, that's for home. And it just like teleports me around rapidly and then I can create like things. Say I have like some web project, I don't know, I think Pistons is one, right? So I have my editor here and I'm booting that up and I'm on some Svelte. And then right here I'm doing some NPM. I actually don't know if I'm using NPM, it might be bun in this project, right? So I've got a node server and then some other process. And then I want to go to some other project, like I'm working on my configuration. Go back here, and then I boot up Vim and go to my RC, right? editing that, whatever, and then I can jump back here. I've got my server pulled up, all that stuff. It's basically Sessionizer. It's slightly different uh, than that. I've added my own stuff. So how does it work? So I'm going to go through my Tmux configuration first. So first, this line, right? This basically fixes the color issues, the pass-through with Tmux. It's a little complicated. I don't fully understand it. Um, I'm working to, but this just fixes everything for now. You can get this with... Um, so if you're in here, you can do control R equals and then insert the value of term and then just do RGB. That's how my uh, Vim check health said to fix it. And basically like somewhere down here is term or maybe it's in Tmux. Yeah, it says like there's a warning about it. Okay, so that's that's not fully working, but it, it was working at one point. Whatever, you get the idea. There's Just read that and it'll show you how to fix it. Then I like control space for a prefix, and the reason is, say I'm SSHing into something. Uh, let's see, SSH, what was the last? Okay, the VAC, that's a supercomputer. Let me grab my password. Paste that in, and yep, we're in. And now if I Tmux in here, right, now I can start doing crazy stuff. I might actually have an attached session, so, oh, control B, S. I don't. But let's say, for instance, we had some Vim working, and do we have anything in here? Okay, test.sh. Okay, I don't think that's anything important. And then control B to create another window inside here. Maybe we're reading the manual for Slurm or something like that. Right, but oh no, we get disconnected. Uh, there's a way to kill a whole window, actually. It's, let's do control space and then question mark, window. Uh, delete prompt for window, kill selected window. Oh, it's ampersand. I always forget about that. You can do control X to close by pane, but control space, and then let's do ampersand, kill window, yes. So, oh no, we, we closed out of it, right? We can go back here, we can redo our SSH connection. Hopefully my password is still on clipboard. It is not, okay. Paste that in, and now if we do Tmux attach, you can see back to the manual, and we can even go back to our Vim workflow from earlier with Control B and then zero. So now we've got nested things going on, whatever. Super awesome. That's different than the script before. That's a little weird, but I won't question it. All right, then let's kill that. And then base index one, you can see this is starting at one, that's two. That's just because it's easier for me to like uh, use the numbers to switch to things. I use Control N and P usually rather than numbers, but Typing zero is kind of hard on a normal keyboard. VI mode is just if you're in copy mode, which is control or is leader and then open bracket. Now I can move around with Vim keys. I think you hit space to start selecting. Yep, and then enter to yank. And then if you want to paste that again, you can do leader, other bracket, paste it in. Nice for copying output. The BG, oh, so these are pretty self explanatory, right? Oh, I forgot to uh, renumber windows. That just when you close a window, so I close that, it just renumbers the other one. That way it doesn't, you don't get like weird gaps and stuff in your window numbering. Uh, absolute center is just for this top bar. I like it like that. And then BG default just makes, I think if I delete this and refresh, okay, it's, it's cached, but it just, it makes this transparent, which I prefer over the green. 
if I were to do VG green, that would be pretty hideous, right? So I prefer VG default. And then this is just for the current tab. You can see that will switch back and forth. FG blue, FG default, bold. Uh, I actually don't need that VG default, I don't think. I think that's bloat. Yep, that's fine, because the uh, it'll fall back to that for the rest of the status. If that is right, if I were to get rid of this, I think, oh, it's, it's cached again, but that defaults to like a long ass path or something, I don't like that. And then status left is just the session name, which is config. Reason for the underscore is session names can't have periods in them, which is kind of annoying. All right, and then this, is bind r just to source the file so if i make changes like I, I was showing earlier and then here's all my sessionization stuff you can see i used to jump around things and i have a couple other little scripts this one uh opens lazy git for the current directory i'm kind of switching away from that but i can make a video about that and then this shows the environment variables i don't think i have anything that's serious in there like no keys or anything but we're cool. This is a nice little useful bind. And by the way, all this is accessible from the tmux like uh, command palette thing. So you can do leader and then colon and then do like any of these things, you know. So I could do set g status and that will toggle the status bar. And then I can just open that back up, hit control p and it'll toggle again. And actually that's so frequently useful just for like recording and stuff that I might want to create a bind. So bind, let's do b for uh set status and probably probably we don't want g actually or no let's 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 add that so now if we do leader b you can see we have a, a toggle for that quite nice all right let's actually go to uh, my script stuff oh and, and one more thing this is really nice i have a uh, lowercase g bound to open github so i do leader and then g it opens the GitHub for the current repository that works for everything, so I can do it for this, and it, it pulls up the GitHub for the project. Really nice for other people's repositories, too. If you're contributing, it lets you just pull up, see the GitHub side of things. All right, so let's let's look at session dispensary. So if I go here, GF, uh, basically up at the top here, I have a list of common directories where all my projects and stuff live that I want to show up in this fuzzy picker. So this is my notes on things and projects and just stuff in the home directory too, right? So I don't know, that that just hits everything kind of. But these are the main ones. And then we also can optionally take an argument to this script. So if I go back before, you can see some of these are being called with an argument, right? So this is basically just saying, okay, just we're, we wanna jump to notes, we don't want a picker. So what I do in there is pretty much if there's an argument to the script, we're just going to take that argument. This is very similar to the primogen sessionizer, you'll, you'll probably recognize. And then in here, if we don't have an argument, then we're going to use the fd utility, which is a Rust rewrite of the original find command. And now you might be saying, like, Sylvan, you're a hypocrite. You like are always roasting the Rust rewrites. Um, and yeah, I got really into hypocrisy recently. I've found the community has been extremely welcoming, uh, but you shouldn't you shouldn't do it. You're probably not smart enough or interesting enough to get into the uh, hypocrisy community. But yeah, you could easily replace this out with find. I think I just prefer the syntax a little bit more of FD. Like, I think find is pretty similar. We could probably hot swap this out with find and then type. I think you only use one dash in here and it would be D instead of dir. And then max depth lacks a space and we would go like that and then we don't need this full path. And now if we do it with find, yeah, it should still work fine. Uh, but personally, I just prefer the FD syntax. So that's what I'm using. So we're spreading all of the things in dirs and then we're only going to get directories, only go one deep. And then right here, this line said basically just removes home, removes like the prefix user slash Sylvan Franklin, whatever. And the reason for that is we don't want a huge long path and everything. So if I delete this line, you can see we're going to get this. And that's just hideous. It's, it's a lot harder to read. And then we're going to we're gonna pass it to skim, which is basically, if you've ever heard of FCF, it's like a little command line file picker. So we type skim in a directory, it pulls up like all the files but you can actually just pipe in standard into it and then it'll let you traverse over those. And then we can just customize it a little bit with margin 10% and color black white. I actually don't know what it would look like without color black white. I'm kind of curious now. Uh, okay, so 
All right, not really different. I, I prefer black white though. Okay, and then this line below. So this is just bash syntax for implicitly checking that selected is something. And then if it is, we're just gonna append home back to it. And that's because we removed it with said earlier for this displaying purposes. And then right here, if selected is nothing, so in other words, we didn't pass a command line argument and no one picked anything, no one being me or whoever's using this probably be. If we didn't pick anything, then we'll just exit with code zero. So then right here, there's a little bit of, this is a little out of the way. What we have to do is get the base name off selected. And the reason for this is because we need a name for our tmux session. And we're also gonna pass that to translate and replace all periods with underscores. And that's like I mentioned earlier, because tmux doesn't support periods and session names for some reason. And then right here, we're just gonna check, okay. So do we have a session? This is for target. Do we have that session? And if we don't, then we're just gonna create it. And this is just like change directory, I believe, to that, uh, to that place and then we're gonna create a new window and then switch to it and then and that's pretty much it for the script and just what it allows me to do is blazingly fast travel around all the different directories, persist projects across things. Now there are a bunch of different arguments around all of the ways you can use Tmux and there are a bunch of different plugins for instance like there's the Sessionizer by the Primogen or someone else and then there's like a bunch of rewrites of that and then a bunch of other people have added things like previews and stuff, and then there's Sesh, which is, I think, based on Zoxide. But all that stuff is, I feel, a little bit overkill. When if you learn the stuff yourself, you can write like a very simple bash script that does 99% of what you need it to. And especially like Sesh, that one bothers me because there's like nested project directories, and I don't ever want like one hierarchy to be able to mutate projects further down. You know, that's weird to me if like, you can have a session both in .config and .envim because now the config session could be editing files in your envim directory. So I just, I have one for config and then I just edit stuff in envim. So yeah, that's, that's my philosophy there. And also like, I don't need previews of things. I can just like remember what they are. And if you do need previews, you can just hit this, control leader and then S and switch between them. I at most have maybe 10, 15 projects running concurrently, and if I don't need them, I kind of just, I kill them off. Let's hit X on that, and this will probably auto-detach me. No, it didn't, because I didn't have that one checked out. And then, yeah, you can you can switch like that too, but I don't know. Uh, that's, that's my philosophy on Tmux. Keep it minimal. Keep it simple. Oh, I, I should also show my script, I guess, for, uh, let's do open github and what this pretty much does there's probably a simple way to do that it's, it's very very simple right so we change directory to whatever our start pane is and then we get the url which is just git remote get url origin and then open it and otherwise we just know url found very simple there's a lot of other things you can do to extend this i've had them in the past but i had one that opened pdfs with a very similar workflow to sessionizer but then i was like oh i can just do that locally with Zathra. And if you really need like SK and then you pipe it to Zathra, you know, and then, okay, that, that doesn't work, but you get what I'm saying. Like I, it, maybe it would be Zathra and then SK or Zathra, SK, like that. And now we can pull up, let's see, test.pdf, okay. So whatever, my Zathra is bricked right now, but yeah, I'm not sure. That's my workflow. It's working for me all right so far. I'll catch you next time.